Rise and Shine on Australia's Vision Christian Radio. The Wednesday podcast, and what a great show of calls we had today. It's been absolutely huge. If I look here, uh, every, look, let me, you know, as I like to do on the podcast, pull back the curtain Aww. here. I give people some inside scoops. Average show, I mean, there's no, nothing really an average We're show. We're never average. No, no. Indeed, yeah. but, but the amount of phone calls that we get on an average day, especially around this period of like school holidays coming in and off, is probably, I'd, I'd say 20, 30, 40 calls, something like around sure. there. Let's say the average is about 30. Okay. Today, 57 phone calls mm-hmm. coming in to this been studio. been a very popular topic as we... Dug into mental health and yeah. asked for a biblical worldview. Oof, so there's oof. so many intersections there between what the um, ideas around mental health, and it's such an important topic, but the Bible has a lot to say about it. So we asked people to call in and call they did. Yeah, on the back of having, and you're going to hear this in just a moment, great conversation with a dear friend of mine. I've known her for nearly 10 years. We've worked together so many times. Pete, and I've just found out, and I, just, I literally found out last month I've been pronouncing her name wrong all that these is, years. You know, that is embar- my name because mm. it's quite hard. Felicia. Felicia. Yeah. I had friends who actually for their whole, like they used to argue about, because some would say Felicia, yeah. some would say Felicia, their children would argue about which one was which. Yeah. And yeah, I, but I felt bad mm-hmm. telling them. Yeah, because they've already been going in for that so long. So I just took it. I'd be like, yeah, I'm Felicia to that family. Well, I, I, I feel bad because I, I back in the day I interviewed Peter Sorkia. I think that's how you pronounce it. I've been saying Sorkia yeah. for all these years. Uh, I, I interviewed her on a radio station I was on. She was putting on an event. And on the back of that, she blew me away how knowledgeable she was and mm. just how fun she was on the radio. Yeah. And so I basically started promoting her to other radio stations around Australia. And everybody's been calling her the name that I've been oh, calling no. So I she feel bad. She should I have feel bad. dipped it in the bud right there. I know, but I she know. didn't. She was too polite. She's too nice and she's let me call it. And it's only recently I was hosting an event for her in Geelong just oh. last month. And she basically whispered in my ear, do you know that? Could you, you know, say it right? I, I'm still trying. It's so ingrained in my Sorkia. brain. Sorkia. Sorkia. You've got to kind of, oh, yeah, if we remember Sorkia. that. Uh, yeah, anyway, you'll hear today that it doesn't go well, but no, no. we get there in the end. Her information is great. My pronunciation, <laughs> not so great there. But thank you to everybody who's uh, given us a call around this uh, around this issue of mental health. I think it's such a big issue. Tomorrow, the 10th of the 10th, uh, if you're listening to this live, tomorrow, the 10th of the 10th, 10th of October, is the actual Mental Health Awareness Day in Australia. Uh, I think we're going to touch on it again uh, and amongst some other stuff. I think we're going to have so many phone calls again tomorrow. As we, I think we, we are. And look, it's a really important topic. Yeah. And we've got quite a bit on tomorrow's show. So I think there'll be a little bit of space that we can just... Squeeze some in. Yeah, yeah so. squeeze a few in. All right. Anyway, All right. this is today's show. And be listening carefully because coming up <gasps> is a very special clue for the Bible story. Sound off. Rise and shine with Fel and DJ, Fel and DJ. on Vision. And our techs have been busy, DJ. We, they have. They've been all over. And uh, Jean and the team, hopefully going to be talking oh, to Jean yeah. uh, later on the week. Well, let's try and get her in. Yeah, yeah. The head of the techs, she makes sure the guys are out there on the roads, uh, getting these new places up and going, even fixing the old ones. I want to say a big good morning to our latest station. By my calculations, yes. I think it's 8.33 for, for 835. Oh. Of our stations is Urala, New South Wales, and the New England region there. Uh, Just about, uh, Urala is beautiful, uh, about 20 kilometres south of Armidale, if people know where Armidale is, Mm. 400 clicks out of uh, Sydney there. It's a beautiful town. It's it's a combination of some old world charm, you know, the gold rush period and stuff like that. But it's got a pretty funky little, you know, coffee shops and, you know, some new stuff happening there. So Urala now has got vision on 24-7 on 80. 8.0 8.0 FM. Uh, good morning. And if you know anybody in the town, let them know they can now listen to Vision. <laughs> that's right. And that's what Visionathon, one of the things that we love is that we're able to collectively yeah. make sure that Jesus' light is being shone in new places around Australia. I mean, it's quite incredible, isn't it? And one of the new towns which have joined the Vision family is Crescent Heads, mm. which is a coastal town. So if you're in the mid North Coast area, you may know someone there. You may be there. You can listen to us now on 88 FM. And I love that this is known as a bit of a laid back, beachy type of a place. It's a beautiful Have place. Have you been there? I've been there. I've shot a wedding there back when I was a wedding well, it photographer. It looks like a great spot for it. It is a beautiful it spot. It says it's got like a laid back, retro vibe, deeply entrenched surf cult. <laughs> like, I want to go there. It just sounds like a wonderful place to spend the day. But now, as you are, thanks to Vision listeners like mm, yourself, mm. you're able to listen along on 88 FM. It's so good. It was so good. Uh, so thank you to everybody. 
everybody, if you've been part of Vision Athon in the past, you're the reason why mm. we've got stations in Urala, Crescent Head, and all the new areas around Thank Australia. You. Thank you so much. And be listening, uh, you know, because Vision Athon is on the way in about a month's time, and uh, we want to get more stations across Australia to, uh, to look to God daily. That's what we're all about. Across Australia, this is Rise and Shine with Fel and DJ on Vision. Vision. Mm-hmm. And look, we're kicking it off a bit late in the week, but it is actually Mental Health Awareness Week. It is across the country. Yeah, well, the the the, the big day is tomorrow. They say the tenth of the tenth is Mental Health Awareness Day on October the tenth, and they do it all you know all around the week, all around all around Australia. Uh, and uh, basically, one of the themes this year is connecting with each other. For mental health, which I really, really like. I think that's fantastic. Well, look, yesterday in the mail from one of the places that I do some work for, I actually got a little uh, mental health pack to celebrate the week or to get us thinking about some themes for the week. And I Mm. thought this was quite good. I got a benefits of practicing gratitude card along with some food. I don't know what the food was. It quickly got distributed amongst the family and eaten, but I think it was yummy. Uh, But the benefits of gratitude card I was left with. And I thought that was a really good, because there's so much in the Bible, actually. Actually, about the importance of think what you think on, but also yes. being thankful, and it does so many good things for your mental health. I'm, v- I'm very interested on this on this card from a uh, you know secular workplace, yeah. mainstream workplace. Uh, what does it actually list there on, on the on the uh, the benefits of gratitude? Yeah, there? look, it says here mental health benefits of gratitude, practicing gratitude boosts overall happiness, it improves mood, helps lowering stress and anxiety levels. Promotes better sleep quality, which isn't that a wonderful benefit. Mm. Strengthens resiliency and the ability to cope with stress, as well as a lot of social benefits, which you were just mentioning, connectedness. Yeah. It's a, it, means, it means that we can strengthen relationships by appreciating and encourages pro-social behavior by those acts of kindness and generosity. I love it. I love it. Well, I, I'm excited because we've got our very own uh, Peter Sakia coming in uh, via the uh, the old Zoom link there a little bit later on to to you know, talk to us about some of the tips we can have around mental health yeah. and we think about mental health this week. But the other thing I think about mental health, it's one of those things where, you know, it's going to be across the media, it's going to be across the news, it's going to be talked about in business, you know, organisations yeah, and right. schools. I think this is a great opportunity to to be really clever as a Christian and take those opportunities and to talk into that why Jesus is such a helpful part of your mental yeah, health. Right. Why your relationship with God is so important to this, I think it's an opportunity to be able to share the uh, you know the testimony that God you know that God has given us. A hundred percent. Well, yeah. look, and I, we'd love to hear from you this morning. Perhaps it's the way that you practice gratitude, or perhaps some of those different things. For me, and I, I, can, I can see a great article we might talk about later on the Vision website about the power of prayer Ooh, and yeah. how much they have found through research that actually improves your mental health as well. Fantastic. If so let's you've got uh, one, yeah, give us let's a hear call. from you. 1-800-316-316. And uh, let us know, hey, what are those things that you can see in the Bible and in your own world that help with your own mental health? Rise and shine. And look, depending on where you are in Australia, uh, this could be feeling a little bit different for you yeah. because there's been daylight savings, which has kicked in over last weekend. Exactly. So, uh, the, look, the, the most simple way to do it, if you're thinking, hang on, I'm a bit discombobulated, <laughs> where's my favourite show, what's word. happening word, uh, you know, what's happening where, uh, you, what I recommend you do is head over to the website, vision.org.au, click on Listen up the top. You've got a pair of headphones up there. Click on listen. You've got program guides up Mm. the top and it'll tell you what is happening in your local time. So uh, probably the best way to do that is to find that. I think you're going to also find out some details in the app as well. Yeah, that's right. If you haven't yet downloaded the free Vision Christian Media app, there is so much content on there. I mm. highly recommend it. But it will help you during this period of time because you can jump on and listen to to catch up, catch up with those favourite shows as well yes. through the podcast. So yeah. if you miss a bit of Rise and Shine or if you're waking up earlier or or leaving work at a, for work at a different time, mm-hmm. if you download the free Christian vid- Vision Christian Media app, media app it's a big blue v Mm -hmm. and then you can click on podcast down the bottom 
of course, you'd just go straight to Rise and Shine. Well, I mean, there's a lot of content, but yeah. Rise and Shine would obviously be number one stop. There. Number one and, stop. And then you can watch, you can listen to a, a, a podcast of the best bits of the show. Yes, exactly. That is all happening. You can find that over at uh, vision.org.au. You can also find that within the Vision app itself. Uh, and make sure you've got the Vision app updated. Make sure you check for the latest update. update there. I know there was an update a couple of months ago. Uh, you've got a lot of new stuff that's happening in there all the time. Just the right mix of things to inspire and things to make you smile. Rise and shine with Felon DJ on Vision. And now it's time for a little clue for the Bible Story Standoff. Hello there, Super Sleuth. Look at you looking for a clue today. Well, let me tell you, it is about a king who reigned in Jerusalem. We're talking all things mental health, and we've asked you for your tips and your thoughts around it. Give us a call, 1-800-316-316. Need to say a big good morning to Belle in Portland. Good morning. How are you guys? Yeah, awesome. All the better for hearing from you. <laughs> oh, great. Thank you. Look, I just wanted to jump in early about mental health. Great. Yes, thank you. Um, do you know, I think that it's one of the most important aspects that a lot of people don't understand because if you look at somebody mm. and you say, how are you? Mm. And they say, fine. Mm. Unless you have that, like it's like an inner godly sense to look at someone and go, actually, you're not, are you? Mm. And you can, you can simply say to them, is there something you would want to talk about? Or, mm. you know, like, can I help you with anything? Mm. That's the simple words that makes such a difference to somebody because we all say, oh, no, I'm fine, thanks, you know, yes. yeah. when, when really we're not. And I sometimes wonder if God made us so that when we were not happy, we were a colour. <laughs> oh, do you know what I mean? Like, like, like a mood ring. purple or something. Like a, yeah, we were one big walking mood ring there. <laughs> yeah, so you were like this little rainbow of colours that when you were sad mm. or you were depressed, that colour would wow. be... You and then you just notice everybody and go, oh, yeah, yeah. she's blue today. But she's you, not happy. You, you know, like you know, you know straight away, Bell. That if if human beings, if we were designed that way, uh, straight away there would be makeup marketed so you'd always be happy all the time. <laughs> Cover up that blue today. Be a happy pink or whatever the happy color is. It would be. Uh, yeah. It would be so. You know, people would be masquerading it straight away. But I, I, I love that. Yeah. Insi- I love that insight of just taking that time. And really spending some time and looking at someone and, and then getting past that initial "Hey, I'm fine." Go, no, no. How how are you really doing? Uh, that's a yes. that's a that's a beautiful attitude there. Yeah, because look, with my job, I mean, I'm a speech therapist, but at the same time, I'm also a therapist. So mm. when I look at some children or people some days, and you just pose that question, "How are you?" and they answer you, "Oh, I'm good, thanks." You can see past that and go, look, mm-hmm. I'm sensing maybe that you're not very happy today. Is there something, you know, we can talk about? Can I do something for you? Mm-hmm. I love and, that. Um, yeah, I just went on a morning walk and thought, oh, I have something I'd like to share because I wish we did have colours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that's a great idea. But isn't it wonderful that you've got the Holy Spirit inside, that discernment, yeah. that ability to be yeah. able to say, hey, actually, that's that's God talking to me and saying for that person, hey, let's dig a little deeper. I think that's a wonderful insight. Exactly. Because, look, I did a 45-minute session yesterday and ended up at the house for three hours. Yeah, wow. <laughs> oh, God bless you. Hey, Bill, thank you so much for your call this morning. No worries. You guys have an absolutely fantastic day. The sun is shining in Portland. It's unbelievable. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> bless you, heaps. Lots of yellow in Portland today. Thanks, Bell. Lots of yellow. Uh, God bless you God both. Bless. See ya. Bye. Bye. Oh, beautiful. Bye-bye. Well, you know someone who's very colourful who's coming up next? Oh, well, I'm going to let you say a name because I'm still le- After all 10 years of knowing her, I realise I'm not saying a name properly. You're relearning Peter Sorkia. Thank you. So you've got to go, ooh, <laughs> but she's coming up after this on Rise and Shine. Getting you up and ready to face the day. This is Rise and Shine with Fel and DJ on Vision. Well, we're very excited. We've, we've got Peter Sorkia on the Zoom with us because it's Mental Health Week and we thought... Who could we talk to who's got practical tips for mental health? Peter, you were first on our list. Good morning. 
Oh, good morning, and thank you so much. Is that because I'm a bit crazy or because I know something about being a bit crazy? Well, let's go a bit of both of those. I, I, I reckon it's because you're an amazing, uh, you know, a coach of leaders, an amazing counsellor of couples, and uh, we've known you here at Vision for so long, even though I still can't pronounce your last name correctly Try after again, all these years. S- Sorkia. Yes. Oh, ah, look at that. Oh. We have to retrain the nation that's, now. That's got to be good for your mental health when someone gets finally gets your oh. name. Right. I'm feeling so much better. Uh, well, <laughs> well, listen, when it comes to mental health, I, I, I can never yeah. forget, uh, you know, a, a really touching interview. One of the first times I realised that people struggled with mental health is years ago, and this is a bit of a weird reference, but I, I saw an interview with Bono from U2 talking about his dear friend friendship with Michael Hutchins from In Excess. Mm, and he explained mm. his, his friendship with Michael saying that Michael always felt stuck. He felt mm. stuck in a rut of where he was going. He didn't have any control of where it was. Mm. And that was the first time that made me think, oh, okay, I can understand this really simple explanation of mental health not being, you know, you, you're, so, you're sort of feeling stuck in a moment. So mm. if, if people are feeling stuck with mental health and they feel like they can't get out of it, what practical things, Peter, can we do to get out of that, that, that stuckness? Mm. And Michael Hutchins, of course, that was a very sad story. So yeah. we do have to attend to our mental health. Mm. So we really need to know, DJ and Fel, that we are parts We are not just one person, well, we are, but there's different parts to us, and that's the bio, psycho, social, spiritual parts of us. Can Mm. you repeat that? (laughs) Okay, there was four four there. Bio, psycho, Psycho. social, and spiritual. But you are going to have to explain what that means, I think, Peter. I I can tick the psycho one over here myself personally. (laughs) (laughs) Tell us a bit about them, Peter. What does that mean? Yeah, well, the bio is the physical side of us, and we've all heard that we need to exercise, we need to ah, eat well. It okay. is garbage in, garbage out. Um, and, you know, when you find that difficult, I know, DJ, this is this is part of your life, when mm. something is hard, you do it with friends. So if you need to look after your inner health physically, your, your exercise, go and do something that you will do. Mm. Do what you'll do. Now, I swim. Um, you know that, um, DJ and Fel, that's what I'd like to do. You might not like to swim but if you'd like to ride a bike if you'd like to dance if you'd like to uh, go for a jog with a friend go to the gym with a friend do it with a friend so you've got that accountability but whatever you do it's going to help the other parts of you each one impacts the other Mm. okay so bio is the first one the second one you said was psycho What, what, Mm. what, what part of you are you talking about there so I'm talking about the psychological thoughts, patterns that go on in our head. And most of us ruminate. Most of us go round and round and round in the middle of the night. Something wakes us up and we think about it, think about it. We can't get off that treadmill. So mm. what do we do about that? And it's another one. Get some help. Another one to do with the social. If you need help, if you're stuck anywhere, go and talk to a coach. Go and talk to a counsellor. Now, a counsellor digs deep what's affecting us now, being stuck. A coach looks at where we're stuck now and moves forward. So I look after leaders and I look after couples when I'm counselling. So sometimes they just need another person Mm. to look at things objectively. So get some help. Don't do it on your own. Well, that is so good. Such good advice. Tell you what, Peter, maybe we'll listen to some music and let that ruminate, as you (laughs) might say. Uh, And we'll come back on the other side and we're we're looking out for social and spiritual. How does that sound? Great. Across Australia. Rise and shine. Well, she's here with us still. Peter Sokia. I've, I'm, I'm not saying that right anymore. Sokia. <laughs> well done. I, there you go. I, okay, I'm slowly retraining my brain after like, you know, 10 years of uh, calling you the wrong name. Uh, but we're talking about the parts of us that we need, we might need help with to get unstuck when it comes to our mental health. You've told us, Peter, about our bio. That's what we eat and our physical aspects of us. You've talked to, talked about the psycho, you know, how we ruminate and what we think about and getting, getting help from a counselor or a coach. But the next one on your list was social. What does that mean? Mm. 
Social is the community that we're in. And as Christians, we have the best mm. community, and that is our church. Uh, and if you're not happy in your church, pray and find a church where you're happy because that community is really important. Any community that you're in. Mm. And statistics are now showing and studies are proving that when we are in community, everything about our health improves, our wow. longevity, our mental health, our physical health. It's all impacted by being with other people. Now, many of us, I say us, many of us are somewhere on the spectrum. Apparently, um, th people are saying that we're all on the spectrum somewhere. <laughs> so we do need our aloneness at mm. times. We yeah. do need to unwind. But in the majority of time, get with some people, talk about things, be with people, uh, sow into them, be generous, and uh, you will find yourself feeling so much better. Be proactive about it. Don't let it just happen by itself. And because it's something, isn't it? You can go to church and turn up and just walk out the back and actually you haven't had community. Yeah. It's when mm. you join a connect group in our church, they're called connect groups, or when you make that time to have coffee after the service, which can be really hard, Peter, can't it? To, to actually Look, put yourself out there. Yes, yes. We joined a new church just uh, almost a year ago. And so I said to my husband, we're going to stay for coffee and that's it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> He's the one that runs out the door. And I said, no, 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 this is a new church. There's all these people. We're yes. going to find some people to talk to. So we get a coffee. We look around who's standing by themselves and we go and chat with them. Yeah. We've met so many people. And yeah, get in your church, get in your community, go walking with a group from your area. Yes. I've started a group in where I live in Melbourne, um, a swimming group. So it's just oh. fabulous to be in a group of people mm. that have, are like-minded in some way. Less uh, talking while you're swimming, though. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it? Then yeah, we, we fit it in. <laughs> we fit it in. Yeah. You do some backstroke the a lot of on, on the way over. Yeah. very communicative. Uh, I, I, love the fact that, I love the fact that God has designed us, you know, like himself, and God, is, as a triune God, he is part mm. of a community, and that's what he's called us to himself as well. Well, that brings us to the last point. Mm. On your four list there, spiritual. You're saving the best mm. to last. Yes. And it's interesting, the biopsychosocial, the uh, the powers that be in psychology have always talked about those, but now in the last five to ten years they are now adding the spiritual. Wow. Recognising wow. that whether you're a Christian or some other faith, that counsellors and coaches need to include that in the, the coaching room. Um, some are a bit wary about it, but I always bring it up. I'm a Christian and I work with Christians, um, but we need to recognise that that's part of us as well. Mm. We can be fantastic in the other three areas, but not so good in the spiritual. And that the spiritual impacts everything. Mm. So with the spiritual, look, again, we tend to um, ruminate, as I was saying earlier. Well, whose voice are we listening to? Mm. So with the spiritual, attend to God's voice. Mm. Replace mm. the enemy voice with you're not good enough, you can't do it, mm. um, my health is no good, I haven't got enough money, blah, blah, blah. You know, the enemy will make you go round and round. God, what do you say about this? What does the word say right. about this? And, and just one other thing, if I can quickly fit it in, once you recognise you're thinking about it, say, God, repent. I'm sorry, I'm thinking about the wrong things. I'm listening to the enemy. And I renounce you, spirit of whatever you are, get lost. It's amazing what lifts off you when you do that. Wow. So good. You, you, I, I can't believe you fit in all that advice in just a few minutes. No, I feel like that's it. <laughs> wow. Well, okay, we, we can go all over that again real real quick. We'll touch on it again. The four areas to get unstuck, bio Psych, psycho, social, and spiritual. If you want to unpack them, uh, we'll we'll have that all up there. But Peter, uh, thank you so much for joining us on this week of mental health awareness, and uh, we so appreciate everything that you do. Thank you so much, DJ and Fel. Love you both. God bless. Oh, oh we too love sweet. you too. All right, uh, make sure you head over to Peter empowering you.com so that's p-e-t-a peter empowering you.com i'm going to put it up on our facebook page right now so you can get the link for it love the rise and shine podcast tell a friend today and it's been great this morning to put the focus on mental health. Yeah, it's mental health. I mean, it's it's October is Mental Health Month, and then it's Mental Health Week this week, and then tomorrow <laughs> is Mental Health Day. So we're bringing the focus to it because it's something that, you know, is not often talked about sometimes in the church, but there's been a great study, and our very own Tony Davenport has done a report for it over at Vision 
Bible.org.au. If you look in the news section there, you'll find a story that says a link between a biblical worldview and mental health. And this story uh, from George Barner, uh, you know, around his study. Barner, you know, the Barner Institute does some incredible statistics mm. across America. And this is, you know, getting to the headline here, basically one out of three 18 to 24-year-olds, 33% of them, have some kind of diagnosable mental disorder in America. Yeah. One out of four have an anxiety order. One out of five have a depressive episode each year. And uh, some some uh, experts are saying these are actually low numbers compared to other studies yeah. that are out there, which is, at, at first glance, really, really shocking and a bit scary. I mean, this is what's happening in the US, USA. You know that it's not that far away here in Australia. Yeah, but the good news is that they've done research to find that a biblical worldview, which is what we're talking about this morning, yeah. makes an incredible difference in a person's life. In fact, the leading researcher just says it plain flat out works. And these are from people who are researching the issues. Mm. They've found a direct correlation between the incidence of all those mental health conditions with those who are rejecting God, have an apathy towards God, yep. they don't have purpose in life. All of those, they're finding that actually through research, that gratitude, acknowledgement mm. of God seems to be some of the most important factors at play. And it's great to see research backing up what we know from the Bible ah. is truth, right? I mean, another one you would, if you're following along on the Facebook page, Dr. Carolyn Leaf has written so many books. She's an author on this, this topic as well. And she's got a great book called Switch on Your Brain. Mm-hmm. And in that book, she talks about how 12 minutes of daily focused prayer over an eight-week period can change the brain to the extent it can be seen on a brain scan. Wow. And you think eight minutes is not a lot, is it? Like that is something that we all could do and say, hey, over the next eight weeks, let's give it a go. Yeah. Let's say daily, let's put away, sorry, it's 12 minutes of prayer over an eight-week period, but that's not a lot, is it? No, no, no. And this is the the thing. I mean, we can get really, uh, you know, doom and gloom about this next generation, whether you call them the Zoomers, Gen Z, the Alpha generation, this next generation that's coming up. We can get a little bit doom and gloom and think, man, is there any hope? But I tell you what, they're a very pragmatic you know, generation, they will do what works. So when you present them with facts like that, Fel, you say 12 we, minutes of prayer. just try it out and they will try it out and they will yes. see the difference in their life. So if you've got a young person in, in, in your world and this is ringing true, we're encouraging you to speak that life into them, speak the word of God into them and lead by example, a practical example, how their mental health can be changed. Yeah, well, we've put the call out this morning. There are so many biblical principles and mm. scriptures that talk about your your mental health. We'll ask you to give us a call on one 800 316 316. We'd love to hear from you this morning on Rise and Shine. And we're loving having so many people call in about this important issue. Yeah, we're, it's Mental Health Month, Mental Health Week. Tomorrow's Mental Health Day <laughs> here in Australia. So it's it's a time where we're focusing uh, around it. And I know you're going to be reading about it in the paper. It's going to be on the news. But the beauty of vision and what makes it so special is you, the vision family, rising up saying, hey, this is what the Word of God has to say about mental health. We mm. love your calls on one 800 316 316. Frank, you're in WA. Uh, what do you what do you do around mental health? Well, I'm I'm what is loosely called a, a mental health practitioner or mental health uh, clinician. Yes. Um, I I uh, I go around to um, different mine sites and all that, looking oh. after the well being of um, awesome. you know of uh, residential and fire safety workers. Yeah. And it's absolutely amazing that that the um, you know the modern practices uh, for for mental health are just so scriptural. Yeah. I mean <laughs> what. What we have to do is is to uh, validate an individual and, and help them confirm their identity as to who they are, mm. um, to make sure we give them hope that you know they can recover and and um, you know think things can get better. They're they're not stuck in in whatever situation they are. Mm. And um, you know, as as you, you guys mentioned earlier, you know, um, uh, prayer, meditation. They're all one thing. You know, prayer is a beautiful form of meditation. Mm. And, you know, we're, we're told to meditate and calm ourselves and to find peace. And, you know, all, all these things are, are, are rooted in, in Scripture and, yeah. and you know, um, how, we, uh, how we should look after ourselves. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's really uh, amazing, the, the, the journey of psychology and that, how it's tried to drift away from God and now it's coming back to... Uh, that's um, how God made us. I, yeah. I, I love this, Frank, because it's something that we don't think is happening. We, you know, we sort of get this idea as Christians that it's all heading away, but you're seeing a bit of a return as you're talking to these miners and people who are flying in, flying out. 
are you able to bring some of that spiritual, scriptural wisdom as you talk to them? Yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those um, balancing acts where if they open the door, mm. I'm straight through there. <laughs> but until sure. they open the door, you know, I, I can't proselytize or, yes, or, sure. or bring it up. You know? Yeah. I can hint at, you know, where are you spiritually? Because yes. you know, I'm looking for tools to, to help you out. Yes. And, um, yeah. yeah, you know, if, if they are there, that, that's great. But if, if they're not, I've, I've got to, um, you know, let, leave it alone until their, their inquisitiveness, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, comes up, so, I, I, Frank. Yeah. That's that's so good. You say so, like it's like being uh, you know meek and w- but wise all at the same time with what you can say. Hey, Frank, bless your heaps and the work that you do. We love hearing from uh, from people like yourself who's on that front line. Keep up the great work. Alrighty, thanks, thanks, guys. Mm. Mm. Thanks, Frank. Yeah, isn't that wonderful? I'm loving hearing. I mean, that is an area where you definitely need support. Yeah, I, I was just thinking, I think it was last week we had the lovely Brett and Kate Ryan from Focus on the Family Australia mm. going up and talking to minors about marriage health. Yes. So it's wow. an area It's an area that, uh, you know, people are out there shining the word of God and shining a positive example into these dark places. And I'm not just talking about the minds, obviously. I'm talking yeah. about sometimes in the mental health as well. Rise and show. Rise and Shines, headline or deadline. Oh, the old fake news story from the news team. They are, listen, the Vision News team around Australia is known for being factual, yes. biblical, yes. correct, on the ball. Oh. This is their one chance to, say, to basically make up a story that they wish they were talking about. So, we, <laughs> who, a we, of fun. who we got on this morning? We've got Tracy. So, Tracy, we're going to go over to the newsroom. Tracy, what are the couple of stories we get to choose from today? Good morning. With a rise and shine headline or deadline, I'm Tracy Weir. Which is a headline and which is a deadline? Government subsidies allocated for assistive technology equipment or a robot gets a face of living skin that allows it to smile. Government subsidies allocated for assistive technology equipment or a robot gets a face of living skin that allows it to smile. Okay. Okay. Well, they, they're Basically, true. One of them, I think, I don't want it to be true. Yeah, one of them's a nightmare. And uh, <laughs> like one some of them bad Hollywood is. Movie. Yeah, exactly. But government assisted technology. Okay. Okay. All right. They're, they're your choices of either headline or deadline. Which one is the is the fake one? Which one is the real one? That's what we're asking you this morning. 1 800 316 316. Be the first one to ring through, and you might win a great prize on Rise and Shine. Rise and Shine. Rise and shine. I, I don't know about this headline or deadline this morning. It's uh, <laughs> I don't know what Tracy's been doing in the newsroom oh there, but I think dear. she needs help. I think she needs help. No, it's very fun. Your job this morning is to pick which one is the true news, which one is the fake news. Shall we have a listen again? Oh, boy. Okay, let's go. Here are your options. Good morning. With a rise and shine headline or deadline, I'm Tracy Weir. Which is a headline and which is a deadline? government subsidies allocated for assistive technology equipment or a robot gets a face of living skin that allows oh. it to smile. La, 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 la. subsidies allocated for assistive technology <laughs> equipment or a robot gets a face of living skin oh. that allows it to smile. Right, well. I, got my, I got my fingers in my ears over here not listening to the second one. All right, all right. <laughs> well, look, we've asked you to give us a call. 1-800-316-316. We've got Tracy on the line. Tracy, which one are you thinking? I think that the robot with the smile is the, is the headline. Is the headline. Tracy, you, you, you're going to give Australia nightmares here. Um, a robot no. with a flesh <laughs> smile. What is going on? You think that's I don't true? No. <laughs> well, the, weird, the world is getting weird, isn't it? <laughs> that it is. Okay, well, let's go to Tracy. Ooh. Headline or deadline, you've chosen the story, a robot gets a face of living skin that allows it to smile. Mm. That is this week's headline. Oh, oh. no. Well, you're oh, correct. Yes. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't want you to be true. I don't, I don't know what I feel about this. <laughs> oh, me either. <laughs> oh, would you like to listen to the whole story, Tracy? Uh, I don't really have a lot of time because I'm working. So. Oh, okay. Very good. Well, here, look, just I'll pop it on super quick for you. This is what it was all about. A robot gets yep. a face of living skin that allows it to smile. The Tokyo University researchers say the uncanny feat is the result of new technology, using engineered living skin tissue and human-like ligaments to give robots a more natural smile. 
The professors say the team managed to replicate human appearance to some extent by creating a face with the same surface material and structure as humans. Oof. He says during the process they identified new challenges, such as the necessity for surface wrinkles and thicker epidermis to achieve a more human-like appearance. Wow. That is a very concerning story. Tracy, do you want your robots looking more human? Well, unless it's Bicentennial Man, I don't think so. <laughs> Great reference to a classic oh, movie. Well done. Hey, well, you're the winner today. Congratulations. You're going to be uh, walking you. away with a great prize. Uh, Tracy, stay there. We'll grab your details. Congratulations. Thank you. Oh, oh, thank I still you. don't know how I feel about that. Someone's, we need to go. We need to t- go to the <laughs> Japanese people and say, well, have they seen any of the movies where the robots take over the yeah. world? When, when Tracy, it's not going to happen. News we're reporter all Tracy was saying that the you know, the Tokyo researchers were dealing with new problems. I was expecting her to say, like, you know, the robots actually rising up against them and uh, you <laughs> know, developing you might have emotions. Seen too and, many movies. Oh boy. Anyway, I mean, anyway. they. Yeah. Anyway, diff- a different talk topic. <laughs> you know, can robots be useful in the modern world without taking over the the whole world? Not with too human skin cartoons. on them. Get them. I get it off. Get it off. No. <laughs> No, human no. like it didn't say human skin. Well, Maybe no. it's just like a anyway. Sorry, it, that's it, not no. our point for no, today. I don't like I it. I think it's time for us to move on. Yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely. Congratulations, Tracy. But uh, let's get into some music. Let's oh, have a bit dear. of a reset here. Alexander oh. Pappas, a great awakening. You're with Fell and DJ. No, uh, oh. no human skin robots in the studio at the moment. Oh. Great conversations, fun, inspiration, and more. Rise and shine with Fell and DJ on Vision. Holy Spirit, bring a great awakening. Alexander Pappas, a great awakening. And it reminds me, Andrew contacted us last week because that song for Mm. him came on Vision and we were just talking about Ruth's text, that those right songs at the right time. And that happened so many times with Vision. And that's all thanks to Vision listeners, the Vision family who... During Visionathon and all through the year, get involved and give so that we can have those right songs at the right time and keep our eyes focused on Jesus, yeah. and which makes such a difference. Excited because uh, Visionathon is only about a month away, and uh, the community rises up together and uh, lets us know what's important. Like uh, Mike here has given us a, a text message from Tasmania talking about all things mental health, and he says a, a, a verse that means so much to him is the passage about putting on the oh, whole armor of God. I yes. uh, love that there from uh, from Mike. You can sh- shoot us a text as well. It's 0447 is the text. Or why don't you give us a call and let us know your thoughts around uh, mental health as we're talking about it this week. It is Mental Health Week on 1-800-316-316. Thanks for streaming the Rise and Shine daily podcast. Please subscribe to the show, rate it on your favorite podcast platform, and share the link on your socials. It all helps get the word out. Anchor, John Newsom, you're on Rise and Shine with Fel and DJ. Yeah. And look, I still don't want that news story to be true. Uh, Tracy's given the world nightmares today. Thank you, Tracy. <laughs> no, uh, no, don't no, want to, no, do no. not want to think about that. As we're living in the Terminator, <laughs> yeah. apparently. Uh, no, but we're, we're, we're talking about mental health. It is Mental Health Day tomorrow, Mental Health Week, Mental Health Month. And uh, this is where a chance where us as Christians, I think we should be leading the culture voice. We should be leading out there in talking about what God does to make a difference. I love the text messages that are coming in. We've got a wonderful one from our good friend Ruth in Tassie, who is just our musical, uh, you know, one of our musical heroes here. Hmm. She's so good with the, with the music. And she says, look, you know, mental health is a struggle sometimes. The right word at the right time yes. is always so good. Listening to good and uplifting Christian music yeah. is so important. I, Ruth, I could not agree with you more. I cannot tell you how many times the Lord has used that. But we're asking you for your phone call today on one 800 316 now we've got Kerry who's given us a call. Good morning, Kerry. Oh, hello. How are you? Yeah, good. I'm a bit nervous. Oh, don't you? Don't, <laughs> no, hey, don't. This is this is mental health week. No nervousness, no fear here. <laughs> yeah. All right. It's just You're in you a safe and space. I and our favorite <laughs> friends from across the country. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's just amazing that the, it's mental health week. I didn't even realise it was, but um, I've had to ha- have a break from my work because I've had a problem with my neck, really bad pain. Mm. But I've just finished my certificate for in mental health. Oh wow! <laughs> wow. Congratulations! Um, yeah, and it's and it's exciting because that's going to be the next path of my journey is is looking for that work because I was standing up at a bakery all day and now with what's happened with my health, it's forcing 
God's forcing me to change and say, okay, now you're ready to do this. <laughs> yes. So so what do you feel that God's preparing you to do? What are you hoping that this certificate will enable you to do? Yeah, um, well, I've had a lot of trauma. Like I've, um, I've a, um, a divorce now and I've got a son with autism mm. and had a lot of domestic violence and things like that. Oh. Um and but my faith in God is is what's helped me get yes. through all that. Wow! But I've learnt so much in this mental health course. Mm. Um, and what Peter was saying, I was just listening to you before with your conversation about biopsychosocial. That's exactly what I've been learning all about. Oh, <laughs> wonderful! I'm glad she's on the right. She's uh, she's teaching everybody the right thing that you're learning as well. There, that's great, Kerry. Yeah. And she put such a, she encapsulated it all so quickly. It was very, very, very <laughs> impressed. <laughs> That's right. It's probably like um, a six week course that she's yeah. done it in, in, yeah, in four, four minutes. minutes. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, I'm wanting to help um, specifically women if I can, yeah. mm. but also um, parents of children with special needs. And yeah, I've just got so much to give. And it, it, I, I'm having so many opportunities just even in my local church helping um, women. Um, like, I've, yeah, it just. I'm re- really ready. I've, it's just going to be um, God directing where that goes and where I get employed. I love yeah. this. Wonderful. I love this, Kerry. This is beautiful. Yeah. Hey, well, let's give your church a shout out there in Warrnambool. You might have some families listening who are thinking, man, I'd love to connect through. What's the what's the uh, church that you're involved in? Um, Gateway Church, mm-hmm. um, Church of Christ. Yeah, yeah awesome. Gateway. Beautiful. Yeah, 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 beautiful church there in Warrnambool. Well, Kerry, hey, yeah. bless your heaps. And we, uh, we just encourage you on this journey. It looks like the Lord is doing so much in your life already. Yes, it's amazing what he's forcing me to, you know, just say, okay, now's your time. You've got to get well and recover from, like, I'm almost having my own mental health journey now in this time while I'm healing Um, and putting all those things into practice that Peter said, exercise and socialising and (laughs) being connected with the right people to, yeah, be ready for the next step. Love it. Thank you, Kerry. Wasn't so scary, was it? No, it wasn't too bad. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, bring back again. Yeah. <laughs> Bless you, Thank heaps. you, Ellen, DJ. Thank, you. Oh, thank you for being brave to call. It is, sometimes, it is brave for, to, to call there, Kerry, and uh, love love your journey there around mental health. Listen, we're asking your phone calls. Uh, give us a call right now, 1-800-316-316. If you want to talk about your journey or what the Lord has done in the midst of this to help you, love these Bible verses that are coming through. Rise and shine to mental health because that is the tool isn't it to be thinking about what god says about us not what the world would like to label you as and we're getting so many great messages and calls around that people using scripture what god says about us uh in their mental health uh journey asking you to give us a call 1-800-316-316 i can see here we've got the very special nicolette on the line nicolette what are you what are you calling to talk to us about well you were talking about mental health with um is it peter yeah. yeah, and um, this week I actually started my own kind of healing journey um, by going to counseling, a Christian yeah. counselor. So, oh, God um, bless you! That's awesome. a big step. Yeah, that's the, I think that's the hardest part is yes. actually acknowledging and then going. Yeah. Um, but when you said scriptures that have helped, the first thing that came to my mind was um, I think it's Second Timothy one seven. For I have not been given a spirit of fear, but of power and of love mm. and of a sound mind. Oh, I love it. And when my thoughts race or anything happens, that's the the scripture that's really, really helped me. Um, mm. And something that my counselor said yesterday, which just like was a light bulb moment, mm. was anxiety is not a part of me. It's something I experience. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's good. And it's not a part of my identity. Yes. Yeah. And my identity, anyone, everyone's identity has to be rooted in Christ mm. for anything oh. to, to work, to heal us. Mm. Um, Abby's, Abby's, ag- Abby's agreeing method. with that in the background there. I can hear she's amening in the background there. She's like, yes, mum, mum, <laughs> you're a champion. Um, so, uh. yeah, anxiety being something we experience, not actually being a part of me, yes. like stopping saying I have anxiety, mm. like anxiety is in me. It's like, mm. no. I experience it from time to time, mm. but that's not going to affect who I am. 
Yeah, it's those little things, isn't it? Stop saying I am anxious about, or you know, I am this, and start saying, "Hey, I feel, I'm feeling this at the moment. I'm experiencing this at the moment." It's a big, big step. uh, Nicolette, I'm going to put you on the spot here. I know there's people listening who are thinking, "Man, Nicolette's so brave, being able to find a counsellor. That's a massive step." I don't know if I'm there yet. What did you do to find the counsellor that's been able to help? What steps did you take to find that person? How did you find that person? Well, I tossed and turned with the idea for months, yeah. <laughs> months and months. And I was like, no, nah, I'm fine. And then the next minute I was like, nope, things aren't fine. I, I should probably get help. And um, and I actually was talking to a, a very good friend of mine who's seeing this counsellor. And when I was telling my friend my experiences, she was like, hey, my counsellor is helping me so much. Oh, Here yeah. you go. Here's yeah. her contact details. Right. So actually sharing my experience with someone else allowed the door to open to the person to help me, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah perfect, definitely. perfect. Being able to get a recommendation from someone who's been there, massive help. Yeah. Hey, Nicolette, we, we just applaud you on this journey <laughs> and we're praying for you and we're just thinking yeah. that you're so brave to be able to share it with everybody. Oh, I think that everybody is so capable of healing from anything. Yeah. We just got to have the right perspective. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Oh, Amen. God. Hey, bless you heaps. You you look after little Abby girl there. <laughs> yes, we will. Thank you. Thank you. <sighs> I just nothing better than hearing little people's voices in the background, don't you think? <laughs> As a mum, that's like, oh, I just want to go and give her a big hug. Yeah, yeah, very, very brave call, Nicolette. Really, really appreciate, uh, you know, feeling that urge to ring up and encourage people yes. around this. It's something that uh, that I know that personally, you know, was a, was a big step for myself to do the same sort of thing years ago, and uh, same for my wife and other members of our family. To be able to get it to get to that place where you you admit, you know what, I do need some help around hmm. this. I do need I need do need an expert to talk to around that. Yeah. And it's so funny if it was anything to do like something to do with your car, you go see a mechanic. For sure, you know you go see experts about your know, computer, anything like this. We're dealing with you know the very technical and, and advanced Complex. you know brain mm. and emotions, and everything like that. And just being able to talk to someone and say, I think something's amiss here. I need some help around this. You're you're an expert. I, I know that it's been a big blessing uh, to me. Uh, you know, as well. So I love that advice from Nicolette. Talk about it with your friends, some trusted people at church, and hopefully they've got someone they can recommend to you there. Rise and show. We're, uh, we've been talking about mental health. Mental health, again, it's, it's zooming out, Mental Health Month in October. It is the week of it, and tomorrow is the day nationally that we talk about mental health on the 10th of the 10th. And we've been uh, trying to shine, shine a spotlight on it mm. today on the show and getting so many great phone calls. In fact, we've got more people calling right now on 1-800-316-316. That's right. I can see Brian on the line. Brian, what are you thinking this morning? Look, there's a scripture that's really helped me a lot. It's 1 Peter 5. Seven mm. and he's casting all your anxieties on him for he cares for you. So yeah. simple, so simple. Uh, when, when has that been helpful in your day to day walk and, and in your mental health? Well, um, I use it a lot. Um, you know, every time I'm tempted to worry and be anxious about something, I just say, Lord, will I just cast all those cares on you? Yes, but um. Years ago, where it started was um, I was with a mate driving down on one of the back roads of Sydney. Anyway, long story, but we broke down, hmm. and this bloke wasn't a Christian. I was a new Christian, just simply believed that I'd just discovered that scripture, you know. Hmm. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, we broke down, and I'm, I'm sort of half handy mechanically, but I couldn't figure out what it was. And I said, I said, you watch this, mate. The Bible says we cast our cares on him. He'll take care of it. So I said, I, I, so I prayed out loud in front of this bloke. He wasn't a Christian. And I said, Lord, the, the Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. This is your car. So what are you going to do? How are you going to fix it on the car? <laughs> awesome. more cars on you. I love and, and what happened? Simple faith. Yeah. So it's a really quiet road. It's, there's no one around. It's nothing, you know. It's like, and anyway, in about three or four minutes, here comes his car. I, I said, you watch this, mate. This will be a mechanic, this bloke. <laughs> this is like childlike faith. And uh, I was a pretty new Christian, you know. And anyway, um, Sure enough, this bloke pulls up, and uh, and I said, "Oh, you wouldn't be a mechanic, would you, mate?" He said, "Oh, no, but I've you know pulled out a few engines and stuff, so you know he's a backyard mechanic." Yeah. And he just fiddled around in there for a minute, click, 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 got it going, just like that. <laughs> there you go. 
<laughs> no, I said, you go, Nick, that's how you do it. <laughs> I love that, Brian. That's the, putting the Word of God in action in your life. And it's great, yeah. isn't it? You know, we often say when you're squeezed, when that mm. moment comes, when the car breaks down in the middle of the road, then you know what yeah. you've been putting in and it comes out. How awesome is that? Yeah, no, it's great. No, it's, it's the best way to live, walking right. with Jesus. Yeah, Amen. 100%. Amen. Love it, Brian. Thank you so much for your call, buddy. Keep up the good work. Oh, I love that story. Great How story. What is it when you put it out there, especially when there's someone nearby who doesn't believe in God and you say, hey, listen, look at this. This is mm. what my God can do. Mm. Love it. Thank you so much. Brian? Well, I, I, I love that passage from First Peter because uh, uh, this is something Peter does quite often in his, his epistles. He quotes uh, the Old Testament, especially the Psalms, and he does it in such a different, interesting way. So he's taking Psalm 55, verse 22, that says, Cast your b- burden upon Yahweh, and he will sustain you. He will never allow the righteous to be shaken. So Peter takes that and puts it, and basically petifies it there in uh, First Peter, and that's what Brian was quoting. Love, love that, how we can cast our cares upon upon our Lord and uh, he carries them for us. That's right. But look, right now we are after a curtain call. Oh, yes. If you've got a song to take us into our day, this Let's is go. the chance to give us a call on 1-800-316-316. Text your favourite song to 0447 488 316 and we'll play it for you. It's the Curtain Call on Rise and Shine. Now, do you think we can get him to sing it like Lockie does? Uh, maybe, maybe Colin, number? Colin, our voiceover man, he's up for anything. So uh, we, we you might know. have to send him across Lockies and say, next time we want it in song. But yeah. look, whatever way you get it to us, we love a curtain call. Today we've got one by text DJ. Okay, who's sent us? Who's, who, I, Karen. I, I, okay. Our Karen. Oh, Karen, who's played Saints of the yeah, Century. Yes, that's right. Karen, yes. She's got a very good one that goes in with our theme today. See mm-hmm. what you think. David Meese's oh. Everybody Needs oh. a Little Help. Karen. Well played. Let's go. 1978 from the album of the same name, Everybody Needs a Little Help. Just think of David Meese with his long, long beautiful mullet. Oh. He's standing there in his tracksuit, red and white tracksuit. Oh, no. Looking this resplendent. This is not helping me at all. No, no, this is great. If you press play, because I know it's got a long introduction right here. Oh, listen to this. Oh, the vibes. <laughs> the 1978 vibes right here. Oh, Karen, this no. is a perfect pick. David, start singing for us. This is beautiful. Listen to those vocals. Everybody sway with me here as we listen to David Meese. Everybody needs a little help. Heard the news about you a little while ago. I tried to call, but you weren't at work. I'm glad I called you at home. No yes, I do. 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 That's oh. David Meese. Woo. That's our curtain call. Thanks, oh. Karen. And I, I tried my best to get rid of the visual that DJ gave at the beginning it's, of the curtain call. I, I, if you've never seen the album covers. No, I uh, haven't. It's back in the day, 1970s. A beautiful thing about this, just bear with me for a second. David Meese says Everybody Needs a Little Help from 1978. Mm. The great thing is it was that period of time where England would get one album cover, America would get another, and Australia would get something oh. else. Everybody would be pressing it with different you know, artwork I over suppose. there. And I'll tell you, each, each country's artwork is even better than the one before. He just looks more and more 70s in, in <laughs> each one. It's beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful stuff. Great pick, Karen. Love that song. Well, beautiful. Well, it is time for us to go and hand you over to the rest of the Vision team for the day. But don't worry, we'll be back tomorrow, bright and early. It is the 10th of the 10th tomorrow and a couple of big days it is. It is Mental Health Day. We've been talking about it all today. It's the pinnacle tomorrow. But it is also Miracles Day Mm. for CBM, otherwise known as Christian Blind Mission. And on the back of Miracles Day, we're going to be talking to uh, my friend, I think it's going to be the first time you're meeting Mariska. Yeah, that's right. I can't oh, wait to talk to her. She is the best. She's just back from a trip to Nepal mm. to see CBM in action. Can I wait? So I know she's going to have some incredible stories to share. We'll also have our chappies. Hopefully they can both make it. I think they've been a bit unwell. Look, I've heard, I've heard rumours that they've been sick. So we'll see. We'll who, be praying. Pray that one of them can rise up <laughs> off the off the old uh, you know sick bed and come on in and see us tomorrow. But that is all from us today. Thank you for joining us for Rise and Shine. We pray that the rest of your day is fantastic and it's a big goodbye from us. Ciao. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.